coming up on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. We sit down with Elon tennis players and coaches who spent some time at the All England Club this summer watching the best tennis players in the world. Plus, we chat with a freshman volleyball player who during her time in high school raised $30,000 for cancer research. All that and more next on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Scarlett Picard. And I'm Derek Skelling. Thanks for joining us on your ESPN2 local sports break. We begin today's show by looking back at last year. In the fall of 2011, the Elon men's soccer team made an improbable run at the Southern Conference. The team defeated UNC Greensboro and won the program's first Southern Conference championship. We sat down with coach Darren Powell and some returning members of the reigning champs to talk about how they are going to repeat this season. After winning their first Southern Conference title last season, the Elon men's soccer team has their sights set on a repeat. Coach Darren Powell, Chris Thomas, and Gabe Lutie gave me their thoughts on last season's championship game and what they have to do this season to become champions once again. We were just getting ready to make some changes to the team to give other players an opportunity to play in the final. And then, unfortunately, UNCG came back and scored two goals, and that shows uh, a lot of determination on their part. And you know, to go 3-0 up in a championship game, is, it felt great. And um, I think we let our, our guards down a little bit, and um, we conceded two goals, and I think we realized that they were going to take us to the last minute of the game, and we had to keep playing, had to keep fighting to the very last second, and um, that's what we did. And it felt great to be able to uh, be college champion. They hung in there and made some good decisions and, and managed to kill out the game and uh, you know then the excitement began and everyone was able to run on the field and join in the celebrations and uh, enjoy that moment together which was quite special. You can't really describe it. Uh, to be able to create history you know for the university and for the program it was unbelievable and uh, just what we had been through with, all, with each other and the teammates and uh, how close we had gotten uh, by the time uh, the championship came by it was a really good feeling. Unbelievable. Finally winning the conference championship. So many teams in the country fight for winning their conference championship. Eight teams in our eight teams in our conference. And only one team is able to win it. Despite winning the conference title, the team was picked to finish fourth in the Southern Conference preseason rankings. Everybody on our team knows that we're better than that and the goals that we are pushing for this year, we know that we're a lot better than fourth place in our conference. You know, you can't really predict what's gonna happen at the end of the season. And we're going to focus on what we have to do, we're going to work hard, we're going to do what we need to do during training sessions, and, um, and through our hard work and our dedication, we'll get to where we need to be. And with 11 first-year players on the roster, there's plenty of room for improvement. I think it's very important for this group to get an identity early, uh, the way we play, the way we want to set ourselves up, and this group's doing that. And from day one in pre-season this year, it was evident we could work on that identity, and uh, we're growing as a team. If we continue to grow, continue to pay attention to the details, I think this team can be very successful. And I think uh, with our freshmen coming in, they've added you know, a lot of talent and, and um, you know, we're going to build upon that and we're going to create better chemistry towards you know, each other as we play on the field. College soccer is always changing, so every year you have a different group of players and, and that group of players takes a different journey and a different identity. I say the way we play isn't, isn't that much different. We, uh, our defensive pressure is a little better, but uh, we have a lot more depth, a lot more bench depth this year, and we have players that make each other work hard. And though it's a long season, this team knows that it has all the pieces in place to repeat as Southern Conference champions. And when you've been there and, and, and done that before, it helps and it gives you confidence to go there and do it again. I think winning the championship last year really galvanized the players, the coaches, um, to see it can be done. We know what it takes to get there, and we just have to stay dedicated, stay committed, and work hard throughout the whole season. And we have the experience. We have seniors and juniors who were there last year, so we shouldn't have any problem on the experience part. We just have to stay committed and work hard. You know, we set our goals in the beginning of this season, and 
you know, we know we have to do to accomplish those goals and as long as we, you know, stay on the right course we'll be able to do that. I think it just gave everyone a taste of it and uh, I think all the players and all returning players, all coaches want to get to that level again and then beyond because we feel that we're capable of doing that. The team has already looked strong early in the year as Elon upset the sixth ranked team in the nation, Charlotte. And while the men's soccer team beat one of the best in collegiate soccer, Elon's men's and women's tennis teams went across the Atlantic to the most iconic tennis tournament, Wimbledon. <laughs> This past summer, the Elam men's and women's tennis teams took a seven-day trip to England. They got to visit Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, and many of England's other historical sites. But one stop in particular left a lasting impression. Whether you're a casual fan of the sport, a player on the Pro Tour, or anywhere in between, there's nowhere quite like the grass courts at Wimbledon. We loved going to Wimbledon. Uh, that's, I think, a bucket list item for everyone, uh, any tennis player. And, I, and it was amazing being in that environment. and. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Playing tennis all my life and a lot of the team is the same way. Going to Wimbledon was kind of like going to where it started, like where everything, where tennis began and so that was very awesome. Just the fact, I mean you could go out and be on a practice court seeing Andy Murray hit and he'd walk right by you. Um, I'd be walking by several guys and uh, Djokovic would walk right by the number one player in the world or Roger Federer and their eyes would light up and that, just being around that surroundings. Uh, some of us were able to get into some of the big courts and I think that was a thrill for them. Not everybody was able to but, but everybody was able to get outside and see some of, the, uh, some of the other matches. So it was just a thrill. I think it's a once in a lifetime experience for all of them and very fortunate that we were able to do it. It, it definitely took me back. I'd, that was the highest level of tennis I'd seen. I'd seen a few guys in South Africa that had come like David Ferrer and Lopez and those guys, but walking out and seeing Djokovic at Wimbledon playing probably some of the best tennis of his life was, was absolutely amazing. After being spectators at the All England Club, the teams got to play a match of their own against local tennis club Win Academy. Well, they were really good. We, we were playing against guys that were probably some of the best British players. Some of them were playing on the, we were getting ready to travel on the tour. Some of them were playing the Wimbledon Junior. So when we were there, we didn't really know what to expect when we got there. Uh, I had no idea what the level would be. We were very impressed, and it gave us a great opportunity to play some, some top-level players. As a team, it was, it was great to have a midpoint in the summer to get back together and play a match. We were all slightly rusty from the summer. Um, but, but uh, there were some good matches and it was played in a good spirit, so it was good fun as well. The teams were close even before the trip, but seven days in England brought their camaraderie to a whole new level. They're very close. I think even uh, our athletic director Dave Blank said, are they always this close? So it was one of those things where uh, I think it's just natural. They're friends, they hang out um, during the season. Uh, a lot of them are, came in together as uh, we have a lot of sophomores on both teams and juniors, so they're pretty close in age. Uh, and they're just, they, it's not one of those things you say, well, let's mingle or let's get along with it. They just naturally do it. I know last year that we went to a couple of each other's matches, but I think there'll be a lot more support this year. Um, it definitely got closer, being able to go to different places, experience different things. They had so much fun together and hanging out together outside of it, and it was just like one really big group, and we had a lot of fun. Overall, the trip was a great experience for everyone involved, and nobody hesitated in recommending for other teams to take a trip as well. well I would say do it. And uh, when it first came out, it happened so fast with us. I was a little shell-shocked because I wasn't quite prepared, but it was great. It was a great experience. I think uh, they're looking at possibly doing this with golf, um, and I think every program that gets an opportunity to do this should be thrilled because it's once in a lifetime for some of these kids, an experience they'll never forget. Enjoy every single minute of it. And, uh, and it'll be something that the players and the coaches and everyone that goes will forever remember. It's such a, such a good experience just being in a different culture. Just being part of that different culture and experience, it's experiencing their life is, is important, I think. Get excited about it, go. It was perfectly planned. It was an experience of a lifetime. You're gonna love it.
The trip has paid early dividends this fall, as men's tennis player Stefan Fortman and Cameron Silverman made it to the doubles final in the Duke Fab Four, and both teams had strong showings in the Elon Fall Invitational. And that brings us to today's trivia. Though I'm sure most of you know that Scott Riddle and Terrell Hudgens are Elon's career passing and receiving leaders, but who is Elon's all-time rushing leader? The answer to that coming up later. We've got to take a quick commercial break, but when, when we return, we meet Megan Gravely, a freshman volleyball player who has raised $30,000 for the V Foundation. Plus two members of the men's golf team who played in impressive amateur tournaments while away from school this summer. And later, we run with the women's cross-country team, who's favored to win the Southern Conference. As we go to break, take a look at some of this week's games and events. There are currently over 350 Elon student athletes competing in 16 NCAA Division I sports. Scholarships enable us to succeed not only on the field, but also in the classroom. It helps us in achieving our commitment. To live the maroon life. Your gifts have the power to take Phoenix Athletics to even greater heights while giving student athletes an outstanding education. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course, this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. You're watching the Elon Phoenix Weekly on ESPN2. What is living the maroon life? It's more than just the hustle and the sweat. It's more than just the pain and the frustration. It's more than just the triumph and the glory. The maroon life is you. Yes, you. You, the athlete striving to be at your best day in and day out. You, the alumni who have been in the stands supporting Elon for years. You, the fans who stream into games hours before kickoff. And you, the little ones who will be the next generation of Phoenix fans. You are what drives Elon Athletics. And you are the reason we do what we do. There is so much history and tradition behind our maroon. Conference titles, all American and national championships. But there is so much history and tradition yet to be made. So join us. Live the maroon life. Phoenix Weekly is made possible by the students of the School of Communications in association with the dedicated coaches, athletes, and staff of Elon Athletics. Most people come to college to figure out how they're going to make their mark on the world. Elon volleyball freshman Megan Gravely was just ahead of the curve. As a member of DECA, a student marketing organization, Megan and her friends planned a fundraiser for cancer research, but the results far exceeded the expectations. I'm Megan Gravely and I'm from Cary, North Carolina. I think I really stand for just, as I said, doing things for other people. Megan not only realized she liked helping others, but she also made an effort to get involved in something she knew was bigger than herself. 
It was a project for school, and it was called. It was an organization called DECA, which is a marketing um, club, kind of. And I had a class dedicated to it. So, um, two of my friends and I were just going to write up a business plan and um, basically just tell how to do something and tell how to do um, the gala, which we ended up doing. We each chose someone who. Um, we were going to dedicate our commitment to, to the project. Megan would soon find out that this project would take on a new meaning for her and her friends. Two weeks in, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, which was completely ironic, completely like weird timing, but um, it just set a spark off and we went into the project with full force and full passion. Like Our previous commitments, the people that we were doing it for, it happened a long time ago. It wasn't as fresh in our minds. And then like this happened and um, we kind of shifted our gears and realize that we have to do this because someone we love is like fighting, fighting. And we know that we're not doing this because we know it'll cure their cancer, but it gave us a small hope that maybe someday that um, the cure will be found. The culmination of the efforts of Megan and her friends was realized at the gala, which turns out was a major success. The gala was in late January, and before the gala we had raised $16,000. So we had already um, blown past our um, our goal, but then at the gala we had raised the rest and made it to $30,000. And at the end of that night, I don't think anyone believed it. We were all in shock and we were like, how did three 18-year-old girls raise $30,000? And um, we gave it directly to the V Foundation. They're completely endowed, so every single cent went to a cancer lab to um, give a, a doctor a grant. Megan had many great experiences throughout her service project, but meeting one person really stood out. We had a sponsor and his name was Andy Clark and he worked for a pavement company in, in our town. And I remember going, we would just go and say hi to him like after school on some days because he was awesome. He was um, maybe in his 60s. He had one leg in a wheelchair, like blue collar worker, stuff like that. And we went and visited him one day and we were just like, hi, how are you doing? Do you need anything? And he just sat us down and was like, you are giving me hope in your generation. And that was, that like blew us away. Like someone who's like an elder to us is telling us that we're making an impact on how he sees our generation, that was insane. Sponsors not only took notice of Megan's work, but so did Leo Lambert and other school representatives as Megan was honored at this year's convocation for her outstanding efforts. I was completely honored to be chosen as one of four out of the over 1,000 freshmen here. I had no idea. I was sitting there with my roommate and all of a sudden he, he was like, Megan Gravely, I was like, what? <laughs> And I like looked around and I was like, is anyone else hearing this? I had no idea. As one of the starters of this year's volleyball team, Megan not only thinks back to how volleyball influenced her during her time of service, but also takes a look ahead at how she can make an impact here at Elon. We would have to schedule our um, meetings for the gala around that, and sometimes I'd have to miss the meetings. But honestly, I just, like, whenever I got on the court, I would forget about things that didn't pertain to volleyball. So it was a good way to kind of um, to kind of let go. I feel that my experience and like my, my leadership with the, with the project has helped me a lot um, on the court. Not a lot of girls on the team know that I've done this, but I'm not one to just like bring it up in conversation. But um, I definitely think my leadership and experience has helped and I think that's shown Coach Tindler that I can handle a lot more. I definitely, I love doing things with nonprofit work, with charities and stuff like that, but I have no idea how I'm gonna make my impact here. I just wanna make an impact, whether it's with volleyball or whether it's in the classroom or um, in, in a different way. I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but that's why I'm here. Megan's impact on the court has already been evident as she leads the volleyball team in kills. This summer's men's golfers, Jack Atkins and John Somers, both played in amateur golf tournaments. Their experience playing on the big stage will hopefully translate to success for their season at Elon. This past summer, men's golfers, Jack Atkins and John Somers, competed in two tournaments that helped raise their game and build their confidence. Summers competed in the North Carolina Amateur Match Play Tournament, while Atkins competed in one of the more prestigious tournaments with some of the best competition and toughest conditions, the USGA's United States Amateur Championship in Colorado. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was definitely a change of pace. Never played in the United States Golf Association uh, event before. I found out that course they can make courses uh, very difficult and uh, very, very long. 
and I found that there's a lot of good, good competition in amateur golf across the country. That was my first time ever being in a match play format, and once I got it to the uh, pass the stroke play, I faced the first person, and it's funny because they get younger every year, and this kid was going to be a senior in high school, so after, I guess I kind of like intimidated him being an older kid and I beat him. Atkins did not make it to the weekend, finishing with a score of five over par, but he still had fun despite his nerves and a blunder on the first tee. I was pretty nervous. Um, I remember on the first tee, tee shot I had a hit. It was early in the morning and uh, I uh, hit, hit my tee shot and I went over to my caddy and I asked him where it went because I had no idea. I pretty much blacked out. I was so nervous. And then uh, from there, I was actually, he was able, my caddy was able to calm me down, and from there I had a good time. But I remember that first tee at about 8 a.m. with about 100 people or so watching everybody. That was, that was pretty nerve-wracking because I never really experienced something kind of that big before. Summers did not have the same nerves Atkins had for his tournament, advancing to the round of 16, despite playing a match play tournament for the first time. But nervousness, I don't really get too nervous anymore since all the tournaments I've played. But match play is a different kind of format than stroke play. So your way of thinking changed. I guess when I got into match play, I was going, I was being more aggressive on my shots and trying to make the other person make mistakes pretty much. Despite not making the cut, Atkins still feels confident in the fact that he made the tournament and hopes that confidence will transfer over to his teammates. Just to see that, you know, that uh, a player like me at Elon was able to be at that level uh, and to know the, to know with my especially my teammates that I know that they're uh, just as capable of doing so. It was kind of reassuring to know that you know that even if you go to a smaller school like Elon can still probably compete against some bigger schools with golf. It's good to have that person go out there. It's a big tournament, so good to show that Elon can still play with the big guys. <laughs> Both Somers and Atkins had strong showings in Elon's opening tournament of the year, the Reigns Development Group Intercollegiate. Somers had the second most birdies over the three-round event. We've got to take another break, but coming up we talk to members of the women's cross-country team who have big expectations this season. As we go to break, check out more Elon sporting events coming up this week. There are currently over 350 Elon student athletes competing in 16 NCAA Division I sports. Scholarships enable us to succeed not only on the field, but also in the classroom. It helps us in achieving our commitment. To live the maroon life. Your gifts have the power to take Phoenix Athletics to even greater heights while giving student athletes an outstanding education. Through their daily pursuit of excellence, Elon student athletes have gained recognition for their achievements both on and off the field. Building a winning tradition takes hard work and dedication. Dedication to the maroon life. Where success is not only measured by just wins and trophies, <laughs> but also by the knowledge we gain. At Elon, we're more than just athletes. <laughs> We're student athletes. Providing support enables success. Help sustain the winning tradition of Elon Athletics while securing the future of our student athletes for years to come. Welcome back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on your ESPN2 local sports break. Earlier in the show, we asked, in the storied history of Elon football, who is Elon's all-time leading rusher? During his time at Elon, Bobby Hedrick totaled over 5,000 yards. 
and led Elon to their first national title with 186 yards rushing against Northern Oklahoma. Elon women's cross country team is leaving its competition in the dust. The Phoenix entered this season favored to win the SOCON and was ranked 13th in the Southeast region by the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. We caught up with a coach with Coach Angle and some veteran runners to talk about their expectations for this season. Over the past few seasons, the Elon women's cross country team has solidified itself as a contender. Last year, they finished third in the Southern Conference Championship, and the SOCON coaches rewarded this team by making them the team to beat, ranking them first before the season began. Our team is great this year. We're training hard, and I know that we can do anything we set our minds to. And rankings are just that, rankings. Um, you know, our girls know that we still have to go out and perform each and every week. You know, it's certainly nice, nice to be respected and, and be acknowledged for, you know, our team and our hard work and everything, but we know it's going to be a tough road each and every week that we're competing, and there's some great competition in the SOCON. Not only are the women ranked first in the conference, but they are also ranked 11th in the Southeast region, making them the only SOCON team to be ranked regionally. And for our, our women, it's encouraging and, and definitely is helping build their confidence that they're getting uh, respected not only in a conference level, but a regional level as well. I mean, yeah, there is pressure when you're ranked first. You want to perform to your rank, but I think it's really good motivation. I think instead of letting it scare us, I think we should really just let that drive us. Our girls have a really great team chemistry right now, and, and it's a really healthy environment where they're all super supportive of one another. They work hard, but they also have a great balance of you know goofing around and, and having fun. <laughs> This supportive environment stems directly from the team goals set at the beginning of the season. Like the top seven are the scorers, and we want those people to be as close in time to each other as possible so that people from other teams can't sneak in between us and get points from us. So we're trying to make it very much like a team effort in the races and work together. For the past four seasons, Elon has hosted the Elon Invitational, inviting teams from around the region to compete on Elon's home course. This has shed new light on the Elon Cross Country program. Usually we're, we're traveling and making all these travel arrangements and, and it's really nice for the, the team to be able to sleep in their own bed Friday night and, and get up and walk across campus to their own course. You know, I think there's something special about being able to compete on the same course that you train on on a daily basis. It's a pretty unique opportunity for people to come out and see what we're all about because this is our only home meet. Um, even for track, we don't have any home meets. and. I think it's so exciting for teams to come in and, you know, just get to see our campus, see our course. It's a pretty tough course too, so other teams are like, ooh, this is hard. They have to do this all the time. They must be good. Runner set! The bar has been set. With high rankings come expectations, and the team would love nothing more than to call themselves Southern Conference champions come season's end. That's obviously what we work for every day, that's, you know, when I recruit athletes each year, I'm looking to add girls that I think have the mentality to compete at the highest level. It would be amazing. It's just, it plays in my mind all the time, like seeing our team be champions. And of course, I've always thought of me maybe winning so concept would, would be a great accomplishment. It would be awesome. <laughs> Cause we came so close my freshman year and I feel like we work so hard every year and I feel like we get just a little bit better every single year. We have really hard days and we get through them together and we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I think each and every one of those girls deserves it and I think that we can do it and it would just be, it would be so cool. Both the women's and men's teams swept the Elon Invitational, the first time since 2008 that both programs won at the same event. Well, that is our show for today. If you missed anything or you want to watch it again, be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash elonphoenixweekly. Also be sure to visit elonphoenix.com, your number one source for all the maroon and gold buzz. On behalf of our producers and crew here at the show, we hope you continue to have a spectacular weekend. For the Elon Phoenix Weekly, I'm Scarlett Fakar. And I'm Derek Skelly. Thanks for watching.
And be sure to check out our next episode of Elon Phoenix Weekly next Sunday at 7.30 a.m. on ESPN2. You can also watch us on demand, Time Warner Cable Channel 1083. Also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. Thanks very much and we'll see you next week.